Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our Choose to Lose campaign where we're trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty with less equipment, less soldiers, more or less hit points even, and more uh, exquisite enemies with the ABA, a better advent, and ABC, a better chosen. And I had quite a bit of thought process around the A Better Advent, specifically the code, uh, the Primes, as they became somewhat of an issue in the last few missions. So a few things and learnings that I've taken. Number one, the Prime actions only trigger when you are shooting them, so you can to a degree assess when and if you want to trigger them. Number two, the prime actions do not follow the normal procedures uh, as normal uh, kind of ruler reactions, which means that any form of um, uh, quick draw or free actions will still trigger. So in a sense, uh, they are only vulnerable against super heavy attacks uh, such as Spanish or, uh, or uh, rapid uh, shot or chain shot. So. That needs to be kept in mind. I then also studied a bit online because I, I felt that I was maybe missing something. And in fact, the counters to the primes are either frost, which is not allowed for any of uh, the lower teams. Only the prime team is uh, using frost. So we will actually have a problem there. Stun, which is again, not available uh, for us. The only uh, weapon that could theoretically stun is the bolt caster. And then the third one is mind control and haywire protocol. The mind control is of course not available because we don't have psi operatives and haywire protocol only works for sector port primes. Uh, so long story short, we will not have a lot of counterplay, which makes it yeah, interesting to, to play against those. Um, keep that in mind when we're now going into the missions because we do have a codex prime here and there is only so much we can do about it. One of uh, the counterplays that I personally came up with though is I think that smoke grenades as well as flashbangs might work well because they only react to damage, which means if we can reduce their to hit chance far enough and kind of build that little castle where we're fighting against them, we might actually be able to kind of outlast them. This is our team that we want to take into. The biggest problem here is Primos, who is heavily injured, so got to be careful not to uh, lose that unit. That would uh, really be a shame. And we're trying to rescue kind of that VIP with uh, only one Prime and potentially an, uh, an enemy chosen. I think it was the Hunter, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was the Hunter. Let's see how well this is going. Okay, so this is going to be interesting because without real counterplay, things are just kind of difficult to go through, but maybe that's the nature of the choose to lose run. We've almost banned everything that is quote unquote OP. So relatively straightforward, 13 enemies and We got two specialists this time. No extra units that are coming. That are coming. Closing on target position now. And we got an overdrive zero. There is the Codex Prime. Gotta be careful here. Any step which would be too far is automatically triggering it. Not a problem. And if the Codex Prime behaves similar to a normal Codex, I would like to pull it with a flashbang grenade. Good, moving a little bit further down. Good, Overwatch. And next round we're going to go and uh, start triggering it. Good, 
Alright, it dodges quite well. Codex personal speed and apparently some sort of a personal shield. I, I haven't fought against a, uh, one of those primes yet. Alright, first things first. Primos cannot be cannot be shot. That would be fatal. Secondly, let's use our flashbang aggressively. It's only six points of damage, not good enough. Let's use some really hard hitting shots. It still has low cover. How does it have low cover? Okay, by hugging the wall there. Fair enough. Um, might as well go in. That's a really high chance to crit. I like the odds. And critting deals a lot of damage, so that was fantastic. Ninety percent. Looks seems about right. Oh, yet another dodge. All right, Codex speeds up. I think we can finish it with a common protocol. Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. Ooh, that is good. Good, moving up just a tiny bit. And let's use Comet Protocol. All right, we got a placeable just in case. Got the flashbang will not be good enough to, uh, or was not good enough to also hit this guy. So per definition, we might want to remove the cover and then kill kill the codex before it places uh, before it places its sounding bomb here. This here removes the cover. It will also split the codex. There is the clone. There is the kill. And the cool part about it is we still got our fist. There you go. Fantastic. Uh, let's stay up here. Okay, perfect. The Prime is gone. It feels like the Codex Prime could be countered quite well with a flashbang grenade. So at least my theory worked out well. So far. Concealed. Concealment to double check. Understood. Out. Already seen that there is a second pack like right on the exit Hostile forces spotted. holy shit that is pretty sizable pack right there good 
good. We can position ourselves up here without triggering. Moving up. Moving up. And moving up. Good. Overwatching, and that's it. Ever vigilant, and I think we got something to hack. Both more turns, and we're not even having a chosen right here. Oh, look at that. We're being spotted out. Come on, kill him. Ooh. I think we're soon going to be detected. No, nope, we're not. But I hear the stomping of a sectopod, which is always a phenomenal sign <laughs> that there's something really bad is about to happen. Oh yeah, I can hear the stomping. Elite Striker, looks like a guy with a shotgun. Efficiency is my speciality. This weapon requires ammunition to function. Happy to see that we killed him right away. And how about we're removing cover? Whatever you say. Moving over here. Still can hear the sector port. It must be really close. Good, so that's removing cover. Ooh, we could charge in and get this guy. I think that would be that would potentially be a really bad idea. Instead, let's move in and actually kill this guy. I wonder why this here would not be in line of sight. It's a little bit stupid. I'm going. This should very much be in line of sight. It's not. There's another Codex Prime. Well, fantastic. Right, when we're jumping in, that would mean... We would lose concealment and these guys would see us, so that's not an option.
Moving a little bit closer. Again, we can't really see this guy. I do not have a great answer for jumping through this window and not being seen. I think there is none. That's just not a good answer. This position, unfortunately, would trigger as well. Gotta be really careful here. I mean, we could... Um, we could use the overdrive serum and get that bonus to mobility and use that in order to kind of get around here, position ourselves here and take a shot, right? That is an option. Or we're simply allowing this guy to flee. Moving over. I think that's what we're going to do. There's the sector pot. It was so foreseeable. Alright, we're overwatching. And overwatching. And overwatching. We might be taking some damage, but it is better than risking to be seen and triggering the V Prime. That's just unnecessary. Yeah, not a surprise. He's trying to flee. Taking a solid, a solid um, Overwatch there. This is should trigger. Yeah, not a surprise. Codex is splitting right after it was triggered. Gotta be careful not to blow up the VIP. And the right way of doing that is eventually using incendiary rounds instead of exploding everything. There we go. Now they are burning. There's another pack right behind them. Oh boy, we gotta be so careful. No problem, boss. Moving up. If we move in too far, this is going to be game over. Time to deal with the prime. Well, hello. Just been spotted out. Um, wait a second. This here. Yeah, this here should be good. Okay. 70% is not good enough. Let's make sure we're taking the 100% common protocol. All right, Implaceable allows us to finally move up. Father really outdid himself, didn't he? 
Good, the officer needs to die. Fantastic. And if we're the one tanking those guys, then Overdrive Serum now has a really good usage. Lots and lots of armor. We know there is a pack right behind uh, them, so we gotta be careful. Sentinels, I think, were the ones that were good with Overwatch. Moving over here to not trigger anything. Apparently it is impossible to not trigger. Now we do have a really big problem. Fantastic kill zone. Can't really move in, that would be suicidal. Standing in the open, by the way, would be suicidal as well. Not sure I clicked um, behind that truck, so really not sure why exactly. It moved me over here, but yeah, we gotta stay in cover. And eventually let them come. Highly unfortunate to trigger all of them. However, I think they should have tactical analysis. Yeah, so all of them can just take one action. That was an important shot. If uh, that would have hit, the Psy Bomb here wouldn't have gone off. Such a fantastic kill zone, by the way. of kill zone shots so that's not going to happen instead he's using the wrath cannon fantastic good we're moving a bit back Haywire Protocol. Can we shut him down? 50-50. We could have even taken control, but I'm okay with at least having him out of commission for now. Reloading. Let's get that elite Lancer. Right on the mark. All right, he dodged like a boss. Whatever you say. Good Comet Protocol. We can hit and kill the Lancer, who's burning, but who's not yet dying. I would much rather like to kill the Heavy Mag, to be honest. I'll comply for now. VIP might die. That's a problem. Good. 
Can't let that happen. It should show us if we're hitting friendlies. So this should just barely not hit the VIP. Richard. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Take care, buddy. Good, that worked like a charm. Now, another question would be, can we take over that heavy bag? That would be fantastic. Very good. So that allows us to swing the tides of the battle. Specialists are just so bonkers. Well, okay, we're pulling yet another pack. cover let's hit that sentinel nice fantastic good our front line is solid the only one who's taking quite a beating is the grenadier They are starting to work on the heavy mech. 13 points of damage. He, he had 5 points of armor and he dealt 13 points of damage. Okay. Well, well. Good, now the main question really is which enemy are we focusing on first, right? I think the sector port is a real problem. So reload it is. Are we going for micro missiles here and killing that guy? Or are we going for the sector port? I think we potentially gotta deal with the sector port first. Problem is this guy could kill Jarangs. Sector port cannot immediately kill someone. Good time to snipe. This guy, eight points of damage to four, six, seven, eight. Yep, that would be a kill. All right, the left flank is secured. That's good. Back into full cover for now. I'm ready. Reloading, and I think we're correctly using Comet Protocol here. Good to go. I'm reloading. 
Okay, it is what it is. Gotta deal with that big guy. Moving into full, full cover so that we're not. So that we're not in a problematic spot. This is more to mark him than to deal damage. And this is shredding. And continuing to shred. Really solid damage. Come on, kill him. Fantastic. Good, moving up so that we can tank if need be. Ooh, what a slugfest. Well, hello there. Weapon continues to be disabled. And we're taking some extra damage. Okay. Well, well, well. Killing time. Good, we can't reach the guy. We again got to remove cover. That's the main priority here. Let's position ourselves a bit in the smoke so that we take advantage of it as well. That could be an option. That could be an option with the explosion together. Wouldn't be the worst option. Problem is the stun lancer hits for a ton. So it should be our main priority. Priest is a problem as well because he can easily break our hacking. Let's try to eliminate the priest. Eighteen, okay. okay. Moving over. Yeah, I think the riot mech could be the next target. Reloading now. All right, Primus moves up. Out 
And let's hit the right mech. Good. First of all, Primos needs a protocol because we don't want to have any counter shots. Secondly, I want to kill that Riot Mac. Moving up here so that we're, we are a valid uh, target. Good, we got a placeable, we can even move further. For instance, like here. Thirty percent. The reason why I'm doing that instead of overwatching is the AI uh, favors targets that are overwatching and we have only one hit point left. I do not want to give them any more reason to take the shot than they already have. Stasis. Another weapon disable. Ooh, he misses and he will take damage from the psionic bomb. Fantastic. Okay, he might burn to death. That is a problem. Do it. The mech will not stay alive for long. So might as well try our theorist. That smoke really saved us like big times. This here is a sort of secure place. Not a lot of overwatch happening. Seventy-five percent on the shield bearer. That's not too bad. That's actually not too bad. Hitting him well. Fantastic. Primus takes that extra uh, defense and we got a stock here which is a hundred percent kill against the shield bearer fantastic no longer a threat run and dry only got the codex prime Can't really reach anyone, that's a problem. I can handle that. Okay, this will be a kill. Because we do have a stock, right? Yes, that's good. Just making sure he's definitely down. Ok, 
Okay, we're moving up because we have nothing to hit. I want to stay too close so that we're not provoking grenades. Ranks moves over. Uh, I was hoping we would see this guy. Fortunately, we are not. All right, moving up. And another Overwatch. Ranks might die. He has been moving and reloading, okay. I'm their target now. Okay, okay, okay. Would have been much worse. We're down to five rounds. So things are not looking pretty. Let's kill the mech first. Surfed as well. Uh, that's not a bad idea that codex moving over and this might be a kill fantastic Again, moving up. Not too shabby. No, we're not taking the Codex Prime. This is good enough. That is a solid explosion. another free free reload yes we do we have a problem with the overwatch uh, though drinks does he have shadows that no he does not That is really unfortunate. Okay, can't really reach him. But maybe this is going to solve the situation. be the perfect position for him going in like how much damage would we deal super high chance to crit all right we're going to risk it 
Smoke bomb it is. In full cover. There we go, that was the miss I was hoping and looking for. And that's the kill. Shotgun to its ugly face. Fantastic. Don't go for Jarenks. Yep, yep. Oh, that's good. That, that hurts, but it is good. Good to know that Jarenks is still alive. Tepper took a, one hit for the team here. This unit is now reloading. Seems doable. Good, moving up. As long as we do have full hit points, we can take a shot in the open. 50-50 is not great. Can we somehow deal with him? Starting to heal ourselves. That was the easy solution. Basically shredding him from there. Fifty. Okay. Please, that remove the cover. Moving, to position. Moving into the best cover that we could take. Was a fun mission. As as a they certainly don't overstate very difficult. That was indeed very difficult. On the move. I was opening for Illarium cores. And we barely made it out. Come get some. Moving on target location. I feel light on my feet. Whatever you say. No need to ask twice. I'm all over it. I can handle that. <laughs> oh boy. That was an intense mission. It feels like every single mission in the end game now becomes more intense. I think the biggest challenge with that particular mission here had been the density of the enemies. I mean, we were at one point triggering Prime plus Double uh, Archon plus Ectopod plus Heavy Mag plus four Advent plus another Advent that has fled. So if, if you can't really uh, single pull a pack and it's just standing there I noticed that for the second or third time in this playthrough that the pots have been placed so uh, thickly or so densely next to one another that it's simply not possible to pull them one at a time. Uh, so if you are fighting against eight or ten enemies per default, then of course that's difficult. And it certainly doesn't help that we do not have mimic beacons or any other form of crowd control, right? So we're essentially just trying to chuck along. Ooh, Primus finally has the promotion. Oh boy, that is so good. So we got a lot of gravely wounded soldiers. 
Punk here uh, got his promotion. Gets covering far. Fantastic. And Primus finally gets his ultimate ability. So either sacrifice, protect the field that redirects any attack against allies inside towards you. And you gain a bonus, uh, defense bonus, or releases a blast damaging all nearby units, uh, which is the equivalent of uh, the lightning field of uh, the sector pod. I mean, both of them are meh abilities. I've played with both and I honestly can't really say which one is better or worse. So Nova has has a very limited use because uh, it also damages the spark and typically you don't want to do that on top of what's anyways happening. Sacrifice on the other hand will have even less of a use because it ends the turn and more often than not you want to shoot. So I'll take Sacrifice but just because it is even less use, uh, usable than uh, Nova. You could have taken the other one. Uh, that both of these abilities are definitely not the uh, brightest hour of the spark. Engineering, yes, please um, continue repairing the champion spark. And the good news is, off screen, just before I prepared the mission, Jessica Jones had received her colonel rank. It was just uh, she was just hitting that uh, that. Uh, portion and the coolest part i've not shown you that yet she received uh, i was uh, already training that she received a really nice skill which definitely made her even more valuable look at that rapid fire right there fantastic so we got our main team together so we got jessica jones here with rapid fire even holo targeting salvo not so usable on her but shadow step definitely is i think if we stack more aim on her she will do a, a be a fantastic sniper frodo really good lightning reflex hail of bullets i like that salvo will make him a heavy war uh, pursuit user and blast padding of course makes him even more tanky wards uh, with the death from above ability quick feet uh, with a lot of abilities for marking and uh, and is currently training to become even uh, more tanky with um, mass stacking of dodge and Reckoner here uh, with uh, the saturation fire which already proved quite valuable tactical rigging which is good and I mean we could theoretically take volatile mix I don't see a reason why not because uh, we have now used all of our points to uh, to get the extra abilities which We'll leave the other points for the remaining teams. Question here is, who deserves a couple of extra points? I wouldn't want to buy something for 25 points. That would be excessive. But something like blast padding, for instance, well, not a bad uh, option. Just to make her a bit more tanky. And we do have the extra ability skill zone. Uh, certainly an ability that I learned to appreciate in this run because it gives you kind of the the extra oomph that you're looking for. Chain shot also something that might be helpful. I think chain shot arguably even more helpful, but it is a 25 point ability. Lightning reflex is here. Not the worst. Spreading the love a little bit, kills yet another kill zone in serial. Well, that's pretty good. I think we're going to go for Dead Eye. He even had his own points, so that is good. Hunk could use Dead Eye as well. It's just a nice little damage buff, and against the primes, well, that's not a bad, uh, bad start. I think as of here for that extra abilities we need to level sentiment further to see if that works out well and these barracks tell a story guys they tell a story of a pretty hard fought battle as you can tell 
Primus takes extensive repairs. Everybody else gravely, gravely wounded. Secundos will take even more repairs. I'm not sure if we're going to see them back in action. Not that fast. And we're out of course. I would like to build the Berserker suit. Did we build that already? Oh yeah, we got the Rage Suit. There we go. Yeah, Nano Mad Kit, and we need something else other than a rocket launcher, but now that is a beautiful, beautiful uh, suit. Got a lot of aim on top of it so Frodo definitely is a great soldier 17 hit points lots of armor I mean one of the things that we could do is give him a stasis vest that's even more health and he regenerates quite a bit of health if he's hit or she rather but yeah well, that's not bad okay cool so I've never had the rage suit on a specialist but it looks pretty dope I like it so yeah skirmisher on the other hand we gave him the plated vest which makes sense and instead of the acid bomb let's just give him the nano med kit he could be the healer even though we're currently not having true healer Having those extra six hit points or stabilizing someone and his fast movement might just work out well. Good. It's eventually coming together, guys. We're getting closer and closer. Venture power. We don't need that. I think what we want to do is make in contact 40 intel sounds like a plan let's get there let's try to get the last continent bonus and let's try to recover a bit from our wounds hopefully we're having a bit of time off because that was rough Dark VIP mission. We got Intel, we got supplies. Codex Prime. Okay, we can live with that. Chrysalid King, I. That is nasty. Muton Pyro, Elite Skirmish, Elite Purifier, Elite Trooper, Boa is, I think, the um, snake that pulls you and binds you and doesn't let go of you. I read about that thing. You gotta be careful. And Elite Assault which are, as we have seen, super dangerous with hitting for 13 uh, and just going through five armor. But yeah, that's a dark VIP mission. I think we can do that next. In terms of available resources, do we even have a team available is the question. Well, yeah, a couple of the B team are back, right? Meltdown, Zukuger. Sandman, we got Mike as a sharpshooter. I'll eventually take Secundus in there because we need some uh, someone who can shred the enemies. And the one thing that I do not understand is why didn't we yet get a second skirmisher? We have never seen kind of recruiting uh, someone else. What I will do is I'll dismiss our Templar I don't see a reason for keeping them maybe that frees up or gives priority to a recruitment in the next um, in the next round of missions in terms of stronghold finding I've started finding uh, locating the stronghold both the hunter and uh, the warlock are uh, then at part three which means we can actually in starting to infiltrate the, the stronghold 
And if my memory serves me well, we wanted to get uh, with the with the hunter next to also get his uh, sniper rifle, which would be fantastic. And then afterwards, we might want to even uh, get with the warlock that his extra weapon, uh, the assault rifle, is pretty good against uh, sonically active targets. So that should be a good uh, grab as well. It brings us to the end of today's episode. Yet again, a little long one. It feels that every single episode here is becoming longer and longer. I hope you enjoy the content. If that is the case, leave a comment down below. And uh, don't forget to like the video. See you in the next run. Bye bye, guys.